Hey everyone, are you ready to unlock the power of your crypto? I'm Faroz from Decentralized Chain and today we're not just talking about any wallet, we're talking about the Nova wallet for Polkadot where some are seeing over 20% in staking rewards. That's right, we're diving deep into where the real action is. Now, let me tell you, this isn't just another tutorial. This is about taking control, making smart moves and getting ahead in the crypto game. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, I'm here to guide you through every step of mastering the Nova wallet. Now, we're going to kick things off by downloading the Nova wallet. I'll show you how it's done. Then we're moving straight into creating a new wallet, importing, exporting, and yes, even deleting wallets when you need to clean house. Now, this is about making bold moves and smart decisions, but wait, there's more. We're not just managing wallets here. We're taking full-scale asset management viewing token balances, tweaking currency settings, understanding your operation history. We've got it all. And when it comes to tokens, I'll show you how to receive, send and manage them like a pro. Now, lock token balances, adding ERC20 tokens, customizing them. We're covering all the bases. And for those of you ready to level up, we're going to deep dive into staking, crowd loans and using your voice to vote in the Polkadot ecosystem. This is where the real growth happens, where you make your mark. So what are you waiting for? Let's jump in and start making the most out of your crypto journey. Smash the like button, subscribe to Decentralized Chain for more content and let's get this show on the road. It's time to make your move with the Nova wallet. Right, to help you get along in terms of getting your wallet set up on Nova, I have hooked up my iPhone to the PC so you can follow along with me. So first thing first, I've already got it installed, but to kind of help you along, jump into your app store or Google Play store. And all you need to do is search for Nova Wallet. It'll come up, you go ahead and install it. Once you've installed it, you then want to go ahead and open the wallet. Now, my wallet is already installed, but we'll go through the same process anyway. What will normally happen is when you actually go ahead and you open that wallet, you'll be presented with a screen that says add wallet, like you see here. You go ahead and you click add wallet. Now, under wallet management, there's a number of things that you can do here. You can create a new wallet, you can import an existing wallet, you can connect a hardware wallet, cold storage solution devices to it. You can also add watch only assets as well to it, and you can delete wallets. So let's go through one by one just to show you how straightforward it is. But for creating a new wallet, you literally just click create new wallet, Give it a name, whatever it is you want to call it. You click continue. And then this is super important. One of the things when it comes to crypto is you'll hear a lot around self-custody. What that ultimately means is that you're responsible for the keys to your wallet. Should you lose the keys to your wallet, you've lost the keys to your bank. There is no way to recover that at any given point. So it's super important that you understand by Committing yourself to self-custody, ultimately you are responsible for the wallet. And what happens is you're presented with a seed phrase or a passphrase, and you need to write this down. You need to write it down somewhere. I'd advise saving it online in all honesty. You kind of want to keep these offline, so laminate it, put it in a safe box somewhere. Certainly if you've got you know a lot of assets in your wallet. And that's it, that's all you need to do. You need to copy that down, save it. Now what it will then do is ask you to reconfirm those again, just to make sure that if you've jotted it down, that you've done it correctly, because ultimately if you've done it incorrectly and for some reason you lose your phone, it gets stolen or anything happens where you've suddenly lost access to your wallet, you need to be able to have access back to the wallet. And the only way to do that is through the seed phrase. So it's super important, hence why I've gone over it a number of times. Once you've done that, you select the words, once you click continue, what you will find then is that the wallet will ultimately be stored in your app. So therefore you'll be access to it. The next one is if you already have a wallet. So similarly to what we've just done, there's a number of different ways that you can restore the wallet to your device. So mnemonic phrase, once again, if you've wrote down the actual phrase correctly, then you can punch those back in again. You can give it a new wallet name that doesn't make a difference and you'll have access to the wallet. As well as that, you can also use the raw seed if you've got the raw seed phrase for it, or you can restore it from a JSON file as well. The other one to bear in mind is Connect Hardware Wallet. Now, there's a number of different options here. We'll do Polkadot Vault and Parity Signer. I'll, I'll club them together, but ultimately what that does is that it allows your 
mobile device to become a cold storage device. Now, ideally, you'd most probably want to do it on a device that you don't use because that way you keep it offline and ultimately inaccessible. But what you would do is that you would fire up the other device. It would come up with a QR code and that's what you'd use in order to sign into your wallet. And likewise, Ledger Nano, very similar cold storage USB device connects to your phone via Bluetooth and allows you to do similar functions from there. The idea behind that is that you're segregating your seed phrase ultimately away from the device. So that way the only way to actually access it is by having it on a separate device and therefore you're presenting another opportunity in order to really provide security to your wallet. The other one is Ad Watch only wallet. Now, this is pretty cool. I like this. Um, I do it on a couple of my other MetaMask wallets in general, but the idea is that it may well be that there's a wallet that you're particularly interested in. Why might you be interested in it? You might be interested in it because perhaps they accumulate lots of different assets, which suddenly always shoot up in value. Maybe it's a wallet that gets early in on the action and you want to also maybe copy some of that action. So that's what this allows you to do. It allows you to put somebody else's wallet address in here and actually copy. So I'll show you how you can do that. Let's go here to CoinCarp. Let's have a look at the sort of top 100 wallets for Polkadot. So we've got this wallet has 0.2% of the supply. All you do is you click copy address from here. You then go back to your wallet. You paste it here, right? So allow paste. And then you can just say this is wallet number 100, right? And that's it. After that, you just click next, click done and then you click continue. You can also actually add in other EVM addresses as well, so if you're free from other networks. So it's not just substrate addresses that you can monitor on here as well. And once you click continue, what will happen is you'll see the eye icon at the very top, basically. And you'll see from the actual title, it says wallet number 100. And you can see exactly what the total value or the total balance of that wallet is. They have $12 million worth of crypto assets, two point, sorry, so 12.5, yeah, 12.5 mil pretty much in Polkadot. At the end of the day, nothing else, just Polkadot. But again, this is how you can watch a wallet. And if you wanted to delete a wallet, pretty straightforward. You, as you see, you click on the orange icon at the top next to the eyes, and you click the setting cog. That will then present you with the edit function. You click edit, and then you just click delete. And that will ultimately remove that wallet from your device. So you don't see it anymore. Right. Next step now will be asset management. Here, there is a number of things that you can do. I mean, off the bat, when you sort of look at your assets, you can see the total balance, which is, you know, here I've got $1,867. Um, but again, if you didn't want to see it in dollars, you can click on the settings on the bottom right, and you can go ahead and switch the currency over to whatever your preferred currency is. Also, you know, if you click on the padlock icon at the top, that will tell you in terms of from your total balance, how much of that is transferable. And if you've locked any up in staking, it'll tell you what portion of that is also under the staking as well. And we'll talk about staking a bit later on. Now, in terms of sending dot, you can do that straightforward. There's a send button here. So you just click on the app arrow, you select the sort of network or token. In fact, this app supports well over 80 um, Polkadot Networks in general, plus over 230 tokens as well. Not to mention it's also cross-chain. So the interesting part here is, you know, if it's DOT that we want to send, you then pick a wallet. So I've got another wallet as a tutorial here, say five DOT that we want to send, and then you just click continue. Once you confirm, that will then transfer five DOT from your wallet to the other wallet. If you wanted to receive DOT tokens, again, you click on receive, search by network, I, I want to receive DOT. And when you click on DOT, what you will get is a QR code. So you can give this QR code to somebody else. They can scan that QR code and it will give them the address automatically. Or you can click on the three dots here next to your address and allow you to copy and paste it from there as well. So those are two bits, send and receive. You've got total balances. Also, if you wanted to search, you can do, there is the search button here straight away, which allows you to search by network and token, as I mentioned before. And also if you wanted to hide assets with zero balances, for example, as I said, there's more than 230 tokens. So, and you may not have assets in all of them. I certainly don't, I've only got dot here. So if I just wanted to really neaten up that interface to what's only really valid for me, just click on hide assets with zero balances, click apply, and then there you are, you get a much sleeker interface. In fact, one of the things I will mention here though, those of you who know my background, I'm in product management myself, so I design apps 
for mobile, tablet, desktop, you name it, whatever breakpoint you're thinking about. And one of the things here is, is obviously what I will say, and I've always said this, is in crypto, we just don't have decent UX. We don't have decent UI. I think it's more tech-led than it is sort of being consumer-focused. So certainly I would say this app is a welcomed break in terms of just the UI. It's, it's quite intuitive. It's quite straightforward. It certainly isn't clunky. I wouldn't say it's difficult to navigate. So again, I always appreciate when platforms when projects take into consideration UI, UX. So let's open that up again. And again, if you just only wanted to see specific tokens here, right? You didn't want to sort of shoot all of them off. You can just do this individually if you want to, which I don't know, it's not for me. And also, if you wanted to add a token from another network, and here we're talking particularly around ERC20 tokens, you can do. In fact, you just literally click on the network, then make sure you get the contract address. So let's just say we're interested in Render. So if we go over to Coin, CoinGecko, go to Render, and then as you scroll down, you will see halfway through that there is a contract address. You can copy that contract address over, and then you can paste it here, and you can add that here. That's it. So once you add that in, that will then recognize it all, click done, add the token, and then that token will now be added into your list. Obviously, you'll have to scroll down a fair bit in order to get to it, but nonetheless, it is there. And also, if you just wanted to have a look at the transaction history in terms of what transactions have occurred on there, you can do, you literally just click on the token of interest. And then here you can see, you know, tokens that you've transferred, where you've joined pools, et cetera. So all of that's basically available for here. One thing that I do like, actually, I will point out is the buy function. So if you do want to buy, they obviously have third-party links into other ramping in platforms. So therefore you can easily click on Transact, Banksa or Mercuro, and you can then buy DOT using traditional means as well. So that's, that's pretty cool, which I quite like. I think that's a great onboarding feature as well when you want to get people into crypto. And that pretty much is actually your uh, asset management. So now we shall move on to staking. Staking is super important. Basically, what you end up doing is you end up locking up a certain amount of your assets and in return, you get reward for that as a yearly percentage. But more importantly, by locking up those assets, you are securing the network. So that's why you're getting rewarded in the first place. And so when it comes to staking, there's quite a few options in here, actually, but let's just switch wallets quickly because uh, there's a few examples that I want to show you. But clicking on staking, it will present you with all of the Polkadot networks that you can stake directly from within the app on. Um, and if you click on any of these particular ones, for example, on Polkadot, you're presented with exactly what the potential yearly earning can be in terms of rewards. So here, if you're staking DOT, you get 20.51% per year. Now, here you can stake with as little as one dot. But just remember that if you're staking with one dot, then what that means is that it's going into a pooled staking, so it's not direct. And if you stake with, I believe it's 558.7 dot, then it's direct staking. And there is a difference between doing the two. So if you stake with the larger amount, then what that means is that you get automatic reward payouts. Otherwise, if you stake via the pool staking method, then you have to manually um, claim your reward. And just bear in mind that if you don't have the 558.7 amount, it will automatically put you into a pooled stake. So that's pretty much it for staking. So when you want to start staking, you click, click, click on start staking, and then you choose the amount of dot that you want to ultimately stake. And then you click continue. Um, but here, obviously, it's saying no, but let me switch to another wallet where I have staked. So you kind of see what it looks like. But once you continue through that, what you will see is on the staking menu at the very top, you'll see exactly how much or how many dot you actually have staked here. So here, earlier today, I staked around 300 dot. And again, if you wanted to stake more, you can just quickly stick on stake more, choose how many more you want to do, click continue and then confirm that amount and that will get staked. And also if you wanted to unstake, you just click on unstake, select the amount and then you click unstake. It takes about 28 days to unstake on both instances actually, both when you're direct staking and when you're doing pooled staking. I think the other thing just to sort of bear in mind though is that once the staking mechanism starts, it does take a day in order for the start claiming the rewards. So here for a pool stake, 
it takes one era, as they call it, one era is a day for Polkadot. So therefore you have to wait a day, click claim rewards, and then you will then be able to claim the rewards and manually claim them. I think my suggestion would be is that if you're not too fussed about it, then you know you can just either claim the rewards at the end of the week, you can reduce some of those transaction fees, or you know monthly, whatever it, whatever have you really, it doesn't really matter. But the interesting part is that if you have the larger amount, then you can go into direct staking and you don't have to do any claims, it just gets taken out automatically. Also, when you are claiming the rewards, you can choose to actually restake the claim rewards. So it just ends up going back into the staking pool again, or you can just take that out into your wallet. So that is staking. Now let's move on to voting. Crowd loans are all about supporting new projects looking to join the Polkadot network. So think of it like crowdfunding, but instead of donating money, you're lending your DOT tokens to projects you believe in. By voting with your tokens in a crowd loan, you're helping these projects secure a spot in Polkadot Parachain. And this is crucial because these parachains are where the real innovation happens. They're individual blockchains that connect to Polkadot, each with their own unique features and capabilities. What's amazing about crowd loans is the community aspect. You're not just voting, you're becoming part of a community that supports and grows new projects. And the best part, once the loan period is over, you get your dot back, often with additional rewards from the projects you supported. So really straightforward when it comes to participating in crowd loans, when you're, when you're in the actual screen, you will see a number of active crowd loans. And all you do ultimately is just go in, select, choose the amount of DOT that you ultimately want to contribute towards it, click continue, and then you click confirm. Just know that there is a leasing period in terms of how long you're leasing your DOT tokens for, which is basically when you're gonna be able to get them back again, right? So they do get locked up for that period. Now. The interesting part here that I do like though ultimately is that all of this is fully accessible from within the actual Nova Wallet app. So they really made it super useful to be able to truly integrate into the Polkadot ecosystem and really not have to leave your wallet. And that's it. So that's what it is when we're talking about sort of governance and crowd loans in the aspect of voting. So whether you're voting on governance proposals or supporting new projects through crowd loans, your involvement in the Polkadot ecosystem is a game changer regardless. It's not just about holding crypto, it's about being part of a community that's building the future of blockchain technology. And remember, every vote counts, your participation is what makes Polkadot a truly decentralized and democratic ecosystem. So again, get out there, explore the app, explore the proposals within it, support the projects you believe in and you know make your voice heard. Now, there is also another element of this, which is delegation, right? And the thing that you need to understand about delegation is that, you know, if you look at it from a governance perspective, you may not know much about non-custodial dot payments, for example, or the integration for major e-commerce platforms. Now, here what you can do is actually you can delegate your tokens. And ultimately, by delegating, what that means is that you're giving your votes to a pool instead, and they will vote in that direction of what the general pool is voting for. So here, all you do is you go to add delegation, and here you will be presented with a number of delegates here. You can have groups, you can have individuals, organizations, and ultimately what you're doing is that you're delegating your tokens to these individuals, to these organizations, to vote on your behalf, because you may not know enough about it, but you may feel that after reading about these organizations or individuals, they know a lot more and they'll be able to make better use of your DOT tokens. And fairly straightforward. So if you go in, click an organization, add the delegation, select across which tracks that you want to delegate your tokens for. So you can say maybe it's just for staking um, proposals, maybe it's for fellowships, maybe it's for crowd loans, for example, whatever it may well be, you select the ones and you can actually just select all of them. You continue. You then choose the actual voting power. Remember, the more voting power that you provide, the longer your tokens are locked for until you get them back. And then once you've done that, you click continue. Once you click confirm, those will be delegated to that organization or to that individual. And that pretty much takes us through all of the major features I would say are apparent within the Nova app. 
There's also the browser feature. And within here, you can actually sort of, you know, jump into all the various solutions that you have within here. So whether it's Bitfrost Hub, whether it's Ulster Portal, you know, there's loads of things here, more crowd loans, the apps as well. So again, you have direct access to these dApps from within here which I think is pretty cool. One of the things that I really do like is, you know, the whole point of some apps is that you don't have to leave the app. Instead, you know, it gives you access to the entire ecosystem without you having to jump through hurdles. And let's be honest, when it comes to crypto, certainly you do find yourself jumping from app to app, connecting here, connecting there in order to perform various functions, trade, not trade, etc. So here, what I do like is in the middle of the bottom nav, you will see something called browser. And that pretty much gives you access to all of the dApps within the ecosystem. In fact, you can jump into those dApps from within here. So for example, they're already categorized at the top by bridges, crowd loans, DEXs, EVMs, gaming, for example. But for example, let's just say we wanted to do some trading and perhaps it's solar flare that we wanted to use. So we click on solar flare that will then ask you whether you want to allow access to the account addresses you click allow. And at that point, you're now within the actual decks for solar flare. And then here you go ahead and you connect to a wallet. You let it do the connection for a little while. And then after that, it will then recognize that it's on the wrong network. So it needs to switch over to the moonbeam network. And similarly, if you already had Glimmer tokens already stored in your wallet, then those would show up here. And right from within here, you can then start trading tokens over to USDC if you wanted to on the Moonbeam network. So again, I think there are some really cool features when it comes to Nova Wallet, especially the fact that it is really all in one. You have all your assets in one place, send, receive. You can do all of your voting in one place, governance, crowd loans, everything is all there already connected to you. You've got staking options straight from here with all of the percentages and the browser to connect through to all the dApps. So there you have it, guys. That is my tutorial on how to use the Nova Wallet app. I think it's a really cool app. Let me know what you think in the comments below and what are your favorite features. And let me know if there's any other wallets you'd like me to check out within the Polkadot ecosystem.